Yeah, so now I guess I'm the only one that doesn't have to drive to and from work every day. This is Auto Collabs. Kyle, now that you're home. It's what it is. It's what it is. How long is your look. commute? <laughs> He's like from the kitchen or from the bathroom? Right. 18.3 seconds. Wow, that's a long commute, actually. That's <laughs> that's a big house you live in imagine having I mean, a house go upstairs and, talk, and it no think about I mean, that upstairs if you have a house morning, that takes though. you 18 seconds to walk across at regular pace that's a really big house <laughs> i mean think about it like in the morning going upstairs like that's a tall ass you know <laughs> cirillo actually he barrel rolls into his office <laughs> it's a while he's got a lever that like lifts him up onto it just like just that i'm like that character bed, flips up and flips him into the office no i'm i'm that character from the movie hook the the dude that does the cannonball and he lifts his legs over his head he's like <laughs> Here I come! <laughs> and Kara just rolls me down the hall. <laughs> and he steps up. Cirillo's um, inbound! Oh, man. Oh, man. You know what? None of that has to do with the fact that we are hanging out with our new friend, Felicia Ray, today. She, uh, she spent a little bit of time in the industry. She's got a little award we'll probably talk to her about. She's been around the Asoduverse. Um, and that's about all I think any of the three of us know about her, which is, which is uh, that cues up typically a great, we don't have too many service people on the show, which is exciting. That's true. Which is super that's exciting. True. Well, we hope you enjoy our conversation with Felicia. Ray. Hey Felicia, thank you so much for giving us some of your time today. You're obviously at work and trying to get something done as well. Yes. But thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. All right. It's great. I love your accent already out of the gate because I grew up in South Philly and then moved to New Jersey. So already picking up the accent. Uh, tell us about where you live and where you commute to every day. That's, a, a, I think, a pretty interesting story. Sure. So I live in the Poconos of Pennsylvania. I travel an hour and a half one way to Bloomfield, New Jersey. Oof. I've been doing it for four years. I really was only supposed to do it for about two weeks. And... But here. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Why was it just two weeks? It was just uh I was supposed to be helping set set it up. I was at a sister store, which is a less commute. It's only an hour. So yeah, it was just supposed to be two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Four years later. Wow. Four years All right. Later. So how did so was this like your first foray within within automotive or was this uh you've been you'd been in automotive for a hot minute? I've been in automotive for uh, a whole of ten years. So I started oh. as a cashier, like I said, in my sister's store um, and worked my way up. Uh, within three months, I became a service advisor, um, did the rental department, warranty. At one point, my owner asked if I would learn the BDC. So I did that. Then I started to sell cars. So I've seen both sides. Wow. I've seen the service side. I've seen the sales side. So I'm guessing you like the service side more because we're here and like <laughs> back there in the back. Right. <laughs> so. Yep. They're all back there. Nice. Nice. So what, like, give, give us some perspective because a lot of people don't, you know, when you think about going, you came in as a cashier, like that's a very, very frontline, uh, kind of entry level job within the auto industry. And so give us some perspective on like, as you made those moves, what did it feel like to like constantly learn and train in a different environment? Um, cause I, I think that's just a perspective that some people don't have is like progress from that position. Sure. You know? Yeah. So I didn't even want to start in an automotive. I actually have a teaching degree and I was substitute teaching. Of course. My <laughs> completely different. Completely. She's like third graders. That's why I do great. Yeah, yeah that's why. That's why the service department's a fit. Exactly. Right. Um, so my dad's friend was the manager at that store, and he needed someone. And I said, you know, I'm substitute teaching, and he said, come work for me. I said, I don't know anything about cars. So when he he offered me the job, I said, this is ridiculous. Why would you put someone who doesn't know about cars? And he looked at me and he said, because you know people. I can't teach people. I can teach cars. You'll be fine. What you have is what I want. And I said, oh. And he, you know, it was my uh, nephew's birthday party. So he was talking to me, you know, on and off throughout the five hours. And finally, at the end of the party, I said, fine, I'll see you Monday. Fine. And I, you know, <laughs> fine. I just felt so badgered. I said, go ahead, I'll see you Monday. And I went, I filled out my application. 
He called me two weeks later and he offered me the job. I said, are you sure? And my dad goes, <laughs> you know, the kid, the kid's not that smart when it comes to cars. She doesn't know a thing, you know, and here's my dad telling, you know, and, and he's like, that's okay. That's okay. And he's like, telling you, the kid is, oh. and it's true. I mean, I was that type that put the key in because I'm that old. The key went in. I didn't have a fob at the time. I turned it and I won. And, you know, that, that was it. That was the start of it. And he did. He made sure that I understood the programs. I understood, you know, what was needed, uh, recommendations, how to talk about it. Even when, you know, three months in and they asked me to be an advisor because they had a, a hole in their roster, they decided they needed three instead of two at that store. And I said, are you, are you sure? Again? Like, right. like, Again with this? <laughs> right. And that's what I said. So anytime my owner, because the owner actually came and asked me to do it, the change, so anytime my owner, uh, Julie Toza, would come down and ask me to make a change, I would say, listen, I'll do it. I'll learn it. But if it doesn't work out, you can't fire me. I got to go back to my old desk. <laughs> and she goes, oh, you'll be fine. So she would come down and go, the warranty administrator uh, got pregnant. I need you to learn warranty. And I'm like, <laughs> no, 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 no. And she's like, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. I said, okay. Do you understand uh, this is how GMs are born? <laughs> right? <laughs> You really understand the path that you're on. It's a good one. No. It's a great one. You know literally every part of the store. I know. Yeah. I know. And then I had a friend that did finance. So he asked me to clean his deals because when I was selling cars, it would be slow at night. And I'm like, all right, I'll clean your deals. And then I take the parts classes because it's literally behind me. So I take the parts classes. So I, I've seen a few things in my 10 what, years. What is it about you that doesn't throw up your hands every time this happens and said, ah, oh, well, now they need me to do this thing. They, I didn't sign up for this. Cause you know, like most employees, sure. like that employee mindset is like, I didn't sign up for this. I signed up to do X and that's all I'm going to ever do. Like the McDonald's employee when I was in fourth grade and I asked them for some napkins and they were like, I haven't been trained on that. You're I'm not that. Yeah, you're not what's that the difference given. in mindset? Yeah, what's the Give difference? us that. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I don't mind trying I, I, you know, I'll definitely take a look at it. I like learning. Obviously, as a teacher, that was something that I was big on, still am, I guess. Um, so mm. I don't mind taking the classes. You know, a lot of people go, oh, more classes? Bring them on. There are times that, you know, whatever the manufacturer, because like I said, I do work for an auto group, puts out classes. like, okay, I'll do it. No problem. Have you, know, you always been that way? Yeah. I mean, I used to read my sister her book. So she didn't have to for her book report, <laughs> you know, there we were reading together. My mom goes, what's going on here? And meanwhile, she's older. My mom goes, oh, I don't think your sister should be reading that. That's amazing. <laughs> You're like, no big deal. It's just ACT prep. Right. Yeah. You know, when she went to college, it became a real problem. Oh, no. Okay. So how do you, so then now you're leading a team and like, what are you doing to instill that same type of mentality? Because I'm sure like, You've recognized that if you have that mentality, it allows you to grow. And if you can do that for others, they have the ability to grow around you. Are, are there like practical things that you're doing to pass on that level of engagement with your role yeah, I to mean, others? Yeah, I'm always looking so that I could sign them up for classes with the manufacturer. Anytime those classes come available, I'll send them. You know, I don't know how well you can see that calendar, but they go to class every month. If I can hmm. send eight, I'll send eight. If I can send two, I'll send two. But we have an emphasis on completing your ASCs, completing the manufacturer guidelines. You know, you have to stay current. And a lot of times people go, oh, I already know about it. Well, now things are evolving. Customers have evolved. Cars have evolved. It's no longer, oh, I can do it. No problem. No, you have to learn how to do these things. You can call yourself out anything under the sun. But unless you have the training and the education to back that up, it doesn't stick. So you recently uh, were given a, a pretty distinct honor in the industry. <laughs> uh, Automotive News 40 Under 40, Class of 2023. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Can, can you tell us about um, that moment when you found out that you were selected? Did you, did you know you were in the running or do you just get like a random like email or phone call? They send you an email, they tell you you were nominated, and I didn't want to say anything because I didn't think that that would be a, a whole thing um, of anything of substance because I said, there's no way. Unless, you know, 39 uh, people are rocks, there's no way that I would be <laughs> I mean, like, there, there can't be, it's not. You know, and I, I'm at that small store, 
you know, it's not, you know, huge. I said, I'll, I'll go through the motions. At first, um, I wasn't even going to do it. And uh, I did. They, they ask you to fill out this paperwork and you go through with it and then you wait a month. And uh, as it happened, I was actually home. I had taken three months off because I had gotten sick. I had a stroke in March and a blood clot. Oh. So I've been working from home for all these months. And then I get this email and it says that I want it. I'm going, huh? Huh? And so I'm, I'm trying to explain it to my, my parents and my dad, for whatever reason, he doesn't understand what I do. You know, he's always very confused. He knows you don't know anything about cars, though. Yes. Very oh, clear on that. Right. And even though now, <laughs> very clear on later, that. Right. Even though 10 years later, I'll tell him like, oh, that sounds like this. He goes, I don't think so, kid. Let me, <laughs> let me take a look. You know, when it ends oh, up being man. that. Well, He's we like, have your dad here. We're going to bring him into the show. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you should, you, she knows nothing. Right. You should. You should. I wish he was here because he, he'll be like, what? Even at one point, my sister came by to, to my place and, uh, you know, she interacted and stuff. And she went back and she goes, hey, you know, Feet's kind of important at her job. He goes, she answers phones all day. But, and I was like, mm. <laughs> look, I got a phone right here. I can answer it, too. Yeah. What? that's what it is. She's like, you know, she makes decisions. He goes. She can't even pick out ice cream. And I'm like, <laughs> you know. I love your dad. <laughs> bring him to a soda con. We're putting him on stage. We're gonna have to be fair. It's of all the time. like decisions to make, ice cream is one of the hardest. I know, but I tell him work, Felicia, is different than home fee. And he goes, no. Uh, <laughs> so not, so you got the you got the email, and you're like, what? And let, you got nominated. You're like, yes. what? And then, and then what happened? Like, what was the, what was the, give us a window into it because I've never won. Michael's oh. never won. Kyle's uh, never won. Correction. But I got a few years left. Correct. I can't. I'm out. I'm Wait. out of the dealership. I got to go work at a dealership again. Wait, Cyril is correcting us. Yeah. I won the Canadian one. Oh. Yeah. But what is it? Four, what was it like? There's 40 people eight? in Canada. Like, that's 36.6 <laughs> under 36. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> You gotta take the conversion. Oh, it's a ten rate. to one. Ten to one. <laughs> four under four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. This is another thing we do on the show, Felicia. Mine was different though. Chance. Mine was like, there's nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> Head down, hand it. here. Here. The rest of them speak French and we couldn't translate. <laughs> this one already had the name Michael inscribed on it. <laughs> Pay no attention to the last name. Uh, oh, so no. uh, we're sorry to interrupt you with no, our you're fine. <laughs> you're so, fine. So tell us what it was really like. So you got you got word and then they let you know, hey, you won. Right. But what happened in the store? What happened? You know, what happens where you go to some dinner? No, What's we, going on? You can't tell anyone. Oh. It has to be a secret until their article comes out. Do they threaten you with anything? Like if you tell no. anyone? Oh, okay. No, no, we will no, make they... sure you never work for another dealership. <laughs> in the... That's Golly. it. They take a bath. No, they, they tell you, hey, you won, but you can't post it. You can't talk about it. So it's a secret. So yeah, obviously, like I said, I told my parents because, you know, they don't know. And yeah. they're looking at me and my dad goes, but for what? Huh? <laughs> you know, and back and forth. And I said, okay, so I, I wait it. Uh, by then, I was back working full time in in house as opposed to working from home. So I waited until the article came out, and um, I mean, I think it was like seven a.m. My GM texted me and he goes, "Is this you?" Oh, you know, he didn't know. So he goes, cool. "What happened? What, uh, how did I not know?" And I'm like, "They told us not to say anything, you know." But someone else had sent it to him, so it started trickling down. Um, Nissan Corporate was really thrilled. I mean, my uh, field manager just left. He just left me with a box of Nissan goodies and all sorts of things. I mean, it's been like a month long celebration. Awesome. So it, it's definitely interesting. And you go, wow, this is fanfare that I definitely didn't expect, but it's definitely appreciated. Oh, that's so cool. So what was like, was there something that, that has happened in your career or something that like kind of tipped the edge you feel or, or a story that, that kind of uh, that other uh, maybe other people can learn from or, or lean on that that you've seen success in either in your department or or like through your career. I think it's just like I said, wanting to learn and connect because it's very easy to sell someone one car. It's very easy to fix one car, 
but in order to sustain it, you have to be the person for the person. So I want, when I was selling cars, I didn't want to sell you one car. I wanted to sell your wife a car, your neighbor a car, your dentist a car. When someone said, oh, I need a car, I wanted to be the person that you thought of, which meant that I had to take care of you because it's earned. It's not a given that you will be a referral. And in the same aspect, the same thing with service, it's very easy in the business to what they say, cleave. You can cleave someone, you can tell them that they need stuff that they don't need. And that might work once or twice. And eventually they realized that they didn't need those parts changed. This didn't make any sense. That didn't make any sense. And for what? Now I got to try to get back into your good graces. And that's 10 times harder. Because at the end of the day, when my dad was saying, the kid doesn't know anything, what he said to me was, listen, you're going to get tempted to do things. But you have to go to sleep at night. Don't do anything that makes you stay up at night. So you stay with the integrity, you stay with the honor, you be transparent and you be respectful because it, it is when you get into the car business, sometimes it's fast, easy money. And before you know it, people are doing all sorts of things and, and you're going, what? He doesn't, he doesn't need a transmission. Oh, that's fine. I'll just go outside and do that. I, I have friends who are at dealers and independent shops where they do that. But at the end of the day, my integrity is too much of a value to me. So I don't well, that. I, I love it because like, as I look at your title and, and you've done a Saturday email with us where we've highlighted your story and I look at your title, it's service manager. And the second part of your title is and owner loyalty manager, right? Which is like, that's a big deal for me to pin, to put that title with service manager because it really is, it's a, it really understands the life cycle value of a customer and says like, Hey, we're going to make sure that someone's paying attention to that at all times. What, what about your role allows you to pay attention to like owner loyalty as like, as a service manager as well? There's, I deal with all of the customer either praises or complaints. Um, and I also look at it, it boils down to people and people of my staff, and people, my customers. So I have to make sure that the staff is taken care of. You know, on a hot day, we make sure that there's water, Gatorade. I mean, I've rented an ice cream truck. Yes. You get what you want. You want you want an ice cream sandwich and a popsicle? Get both. Get both. I don't mind. I love it. I don't mind. But these are the things. That <laughs> my kids my kids are going to listen well, to this podcast and be like, Come on, we're moving to Jersey. I'm working for the Nissan store. <laughs> Come on, Dad. But those are the things. You know, and you go, it's just yeah. ice cream. But I recognize that they're hot. I recognize that they're working in a, you know, 150 degree, they feel shop. They're the ones turning the wrenches. Yep. Let's, let's I'm telling you, when I was in the dealership, there's nothing that a frosty can't solve. You know, (laughs) like you come back with two fistfuls of like stacks of frosties just ready for people that solves so many communication breakdowns, you know? Yeah. So they're thirsty you know every month we have at least something uh this month we're trying to get them uh to rent out a movie theater to watch gran turismo oh, it was yeah. Nissan, you know so we're trying to do that um we, we've done like i said the thanksgiving thing that's definitely one if it's valentine's day i get heart-shaped pizza if it's halloween i get jack and pizza you know and i and dress yeah. like a pilgrim yes <laughs> Yeah, so I don't amazing. mind. We got costumes for them all, you know. Are you guys I, I was hiring? A teacher. To me, I just... <laughs> asking for a friend. <laughs> yeah. Cirillo and my kids both love ice cream. Yeah. That's the point. I here, could see them like Indian this. style just sitting around like <laughs> trading Lego tips. <laughs> uh, F- Felicia, what is what is your aspiration in the industry? You've obviously done so much. Um and and you care so much and you see you see the industry kind of for what it is what what, what's your goal i want to keep i don't like to stay stagnant for very long so i keep advancing um i love to learn i'd love to go to nada that's something uh, i mentioned julie tozo earlier um she was one of the owners unfortunately last year she passed away unexpectedly Mm. um and she was a mentor for me and i'm going Oh man, do I stay in automotive? Do I go back to teaching? And ultimately after this, you know, year, I said, I'm exactly where I should be. 
Yes, I'm glad you said that because we were about to launch a full campaign to keep you in auto. <laughs> no, it, it took it took a while because I said, "Do I leave? Do I not?" It, it was a real blow. It was a real blow to the dealership. It was a real blow to me. Like I said, she was my mentor and friend, and um, I did. I just said, "You know what? This is it. She's she's still here, and I follow what she has taught me. Uh, you know, and that's what she wanted. She wanted me to go to NADA, so that's." You mean not the the event, but the academy? Is that what you're saying? Yes, the academy. Cool. Yes. Well, actually, Very with awesome. uh, forty under forty, I think we have to go to the event in Vegas. So we'll see you at the event, but NADA Academy will also be at a SodaCon, so you can meet a lot of the instructors and see them there, and like, oh, nice, grease those wheels a little bit while you're there. Well, I've been saving my pennies. It's that's a that's a costly endeavor but i would say my pennies and I, I would like to make that happen in her honor so that's awesome that's amazing. awesome amazing well felicia we thank you so much for spending a little bit thank of time with you. us your energy is infectious and i'm and we can see it in the ice cream trucks and pilgrim outfits <laughs> that, that you have at the store and i'm sure your employees love all of it too congrats on the 40 under 40 thank you. and uh like i said thank you so much for spending a little time here on auto Collab. thank you thank you so much for having me guys i really appreciate it Okay, about that commute, gentlemen. Oof. <laughs> I used to have a commute that was similar. Really? I felt so bad for yeah. her in that moment. I was like on the verge of tears. She doesn't look nice. like she feels bad for herself. Not at all. She's pumped. She uh, And that's what I love. I'm like, for you to commit for that long, for four years, to doing the hour and a half drive, mm -hmm. each that, way. I mean, she said she loves her job. There's, there's some people that are like, oh, I love my job. And you're like, yeah, right. She loves her job, mm -hmm. you know, so, and, and just to think about the inside of like, yeah, I'm going to take care of my employees this way. I want to make sure this month we're doing this thing. This yep. month we're doing this thing. They're always getting engaged and firing, but also I'm going to lean on them. I'm going to make sure they're always doing their tasks. They're always doing their tests. They're always t taking and learning, right? That balance of like, yeah, we're getting down to work, but also we're going to have a lot of fun. Key. Well, that's clutch. what works best, right? Well, yeah. it's that it's like that balance. It's it's weird that somehow in the last mm, five years, showing up to work became less about work. Like I think the the lines got crossed because there's so much conversation about culture and servant leadership and this and that that people started to go, oh, so like I just have to feel all warm and fuzzy here. No, like we're here to work, and I feel like mm -hmm. she struck that balance of. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to I'm here. I'm here for you. I'm here to support you. We're going to do some fun stuff. So this is an amazing place culture. Also, I'm going to hold you to account. You're here to perform. You're here to work. And and honestly, Absolutely. I think we're seeing um, a resurgence of this topic of where employees actually desire that level of structure and accountability. They it's want to know. What's yes, yes. Well, that's exactly. the big lie in culture, right? That working hard is somehow takes away from your life like investing yourself. But the reality is hard work in a great environment is one of the most fulfilling things. Yes, you go uh, home tired. Have you ever gotten tired after a workout? Right? Never. <laughs> never. Have you ever gotten tired, Kyle, after a 10 mile run? Like, no, because you know, I think Seth Godin said it. He's like, no one will ever write a book called How to Run a Marathon Without Getting Tired. But when you listen right. to the people who have done it, working out, I've, I've heard about it. Um, they would say, <laughs> it feels really good. <laughs> feels so it feels good really good to know that you worked hard towards something productive and it's done so i think that's one of the lies yes. that's out there in culture and i think she's just proving proving it wrong right and i bet the environment in her shop also reflects that absolutely yep amazing conversation with our new pal felicia ray i keep wanting to say felicia ray felicia. i don't know why maybe it's the no 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 way jose behind me <laughs> uh <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this conversation on auto collabs on behalf of myself michael cirillo Paul J. Daly and Kyle M -M 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 Mount Seer. We'll catch you on the next episode. Welcome, Welcome to, to Auto Collapse. <laughs> Why are we recording? Are we rolling yet? <laughs>